everybody and welcome to another adventure with Sarah. Today I am at the Taj Mahal in India. Chala Chala. All right, friends, I've got booties on my feet. I'm here at the Taj Mahal. So I am going into the entrance. <clears throat> There's the curtains going backwards. So you're not allowed to have shoes on any of the white marble because it's, uh, it's delicate. Some of the other restrictions to just be aware of if you come to the Taj Mahal is that you basically can't bring anything. You can bring your camera, but no other electronics. You're not allowed to bring a pen or paper or sharp metal objects. So basically they don't want people scratching things into the monument. So we have come with essentially nothing. They give you a bottle of water at the entrance. So that's nice. You don't need to bring your water, but just my camera, that's all I've brought. And that's what I recommend. So the great attraction of the Taj Mahal is that it is a monument to love. So a Mughal emperor in the 1600s, one of his wives was very special to him. He had multiple wives, but one of them was particularly special. She had 14 children. Of the 14, only about six survived. The 14th was the one that killed her, which I can imagine if I had 14 children, I'd be the same. So he was so heartbroken. They say that his hair turned white overnight and he lost interest in ruling. Uh, one of his sons eventually imprisoned him, uh, but he spent basically the rest of his days, the next 21 years, constructing this monument to his wife. Now you might be wondering, if he had more than one wife, are they all in here? Nope, just the favorite. The ones that are not the favorites are buried out here. Two of them, and they're buried where nobody, nobody visits them. So I guess that's what happens when you're the favorite, right? It's an incredible monument. It's one of the heaviest structures on the world, if not the heaviest structure on the, in the world, but it hasn't settled, which is really kind of interesting that they were able to do that. They say the cost of the Taj Mahal would be estimated in today's money to be something like, oh, $70 million. But that doesn't really get it right because the reason it's that much is that they didn't pay for materials. These were all materials available uh, to the Mughals at the time, and they just took what they wanted. So if you actually wanted to build this from scratch, I think it's gonna be a little, a little bit more than $70 million in today's money. So let's go inside and take a look at the interior of the Taj Mahal. Four minarets surround the Taj Mahal, and apparently they, they lean two degrees outwards away from the Taj, so that in case there's an earthquake, the minarets don't take the entire monument down. As you can see, beautiful marble decoration, but because this is an Islamic monument, we only see the same style of Islamic ornamentation, which is to say flowers, Arabic writing, but no no people, no, no figures. That's something you cannot do in Islamic art. Inside the Taj Mahal, we're not allowed to film, but from the outside, you can see the same decorations that you see on the inside. And if you look at the flowers there, those are actually translucent. So semi-precious stones, they must be. Um, they look like glass when you uh, aim a light at them. So if you come to the Taj Mahal, ask one of the guard security guards to shine a light into these flowers, and you can see that they are luminous. They look like fire when they are illuminated. So there's a clear reason that the Taj Mahal is one of the great wonders of the world. It is incredibly impressive. The inside is pretty spare. We have just the, the tombs on the inside of uh, the emperor and his wife. 
but beautiful, beautiful decoration all around and a feat of humanity if there ever has been one. So I definitely invite you to come here to Agra and see the Taj Mahal.